Can we say praise the Lord? We are back in the house of prayer one more time. And I am indeed thankful to God for how he has blessed us and strengthened us and encouraged our hearts. And especially am I thankful to the Lord how he met us here throughout this past week on our 56th annual Bible conference and convention. Every single night, every single night, this church was filled with the capacity as men from various parts of the country came to us, or far west is California and far east is New York, to bring to us the word of the Lord. And our hearts were thrilled and we were blessed of God. Now we're coming, we're going before the Lord in prayer and I'm going to ask uh, Minister uh, Walter Shaw to lead, be prepared to lead us to the throne of grace. I have some names here. Uh, we have a, quite a few names that we want to uh, let you know is on this prayer list. Obviously, we're not going to be able to read them all. But we do want you to remember these who are sick and shut in. Especially a young lady who I understand is in, uh, in on the critical list. She's in intensive care. Her name is Lisa Ware. And also, you want to remember Anthony Wooten, Rachel Smith. Louise Leonard, June Latham, Eddie Amos, Georgia Spires, and Hope Reed, Helen Figglewitch, Naomi Williams, and Mrs. Martha Mims. I want you to remember that God is able to answer prayer. He's able to heal. He will do for us what we think is impossible. Some people thought things were impossible, but the Lord Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. We're going to ask Minister Shaw. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we come, Lord, humbling ourselves, asking for a blessing. Lord Jesus, we need you to stay in the midst of us right now. We need a blessing from you right now, Lord. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, our loved ones are in the hospital. Lord Jesus and the doctors are shaking their heads, don't know what's wrong. Lord, you know what's wrong with us long time before the doctors discovered. You made us, you know all about us. Stretch forth your hand and touch right now. Touch our bodies, Lord Jesus, and raise us up, oh Heavenly Father. Touch us, Lord. Make that sugar back down to it where it's supposed to be. Oh God, kill that arthritis in our bones. Oh Heavenly Father, strengthen our hearts. Give us the right mind, Lord, where we all want to serve you. Bless that sin of the name, Lord Jesus. Let him give his life to you, Lord. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, stretch forth your hand and touch our pastor. Strengthen him, oh God. Continue to fill him with your words, Lord Jesus, where he might have feelings enough to feed his flock, Lord. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, bless us today. Bless this whole congregation, Lord. Bless each and every one of us. Bless our homes. Bless our jobs, Lord. Bless us financially. Bless our health, Lord. Bless every name that's on this prayer list today, Lord. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, touch their hearts, their minds. Heal their bodies. Deliver them from this adversity, Lord. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we stand in the need of a blessing. Bless right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all say, Amen. Our scripture reading today will be found in the first epistle of John, the third chapter. Will the congregation please repeat after me? Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And if doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and all the congregation said, Amen. Amen.
is lost and the fullness thereof, and we that were there, oh Lord, oh Lord, it all belongs to Him who has made us because He wanted me so.
say praise the Lord. He is the keeper of our soul. Why should I be bound when Jesus has set me free? Can we say praise the Lord? Let's give the Lord a great big hand here. And I want to thank our choir and our director and our musicians for this beautiful, beautiful song that has been a source of inspiration to all of us. And I know that you've been, our choir has had a little vacation because we've had our Bible conference. Sometimes we get on a little vacation and they, they forget that the choir rehearsal is Tuesday. And uh, we want all of you to be back. I think the, uh, the director has some special remarks and some things I want to say to you. So I hope that every one of you, each and every one, without fail, will be here Tuesday night, amen, for a choir rehearsal. May God bless you. Oh, my heart is filled with joy as I look out over this great congregation. And those of you who are in the overflow in the fellowship hall, I didn't get a chance to come over and say praise the Lord to you. So I want to take this opportunity to say praise the Lord to you. I know sometimes you feel like, well, I could have stayed home and watched it on television. But I'm glad you're here. And uh, I think that this being here in the house of God is going to be a real blessing to you. To those of you who are at home and have tuned in to worship with us, and I know you're many, because I get reports, I get letters from you, and tell us how much you enjoyed our service. I'm very glad to have you, and we thank the Lord for you, and I hope that you will get something out of this service that will be a real blessing to you. To all this great host of saints who come from far and near, I am always nervous when I stand before you. You would think that uh, I'd be used to it by now. Uh, I've been preaching now for uh, over 37 years. And I've been pastoring at least 35. And uh, I've been pastor of this church for uh, 28 years next month. And you would think that by now I'd be used to it. But every Sunday is the same. I have these butterflies and this concern. And uh, somebody tells me that that's the way it should be. When you don't feel that way, you take your people for granted. And I don't ever want to take uh, the people of God for granted because as I look out over this congregation, uh, you have, uh, you exemplify to me a people who have come to worship. And you're not here, you, you didn't come here to, to hear uh, someone making up things as he goes along because he wasn't prepared. I, was, I remember I was at a party one night, and I say a party, it was a party, it wasn't a drinking party, but it was a party with saints. And I had to leave early, because I hadn't finished my sermon. And I told one of the sisters, that I'm leaving, I, I got to go now. And they said, oh, you don't have to go now. I said, well, my sermon is not ready yet, I still have some things to do. Oh, she just opened up your mouth. I said, and the Lord will fill it. And I said, well, I, said, I believe that, but I think maybe I better go home and <laughs> and prepare. Now, when I say prepare, I don't mean that I'm reading anything. I, I got notes here before me. I always have notes. I learned that notes keep me on the right track. I don't have to be running from Genesis to Revelation because I forgot what I wanted to say. And while I'm trying to think of what I wanted to say, I start preaching all over the place. Uh, that can happen. You know, you can, you, can, you can forget what you want to say. And it's a terrible thing uh, to forget what you want to say. Every Sunday, when I take this pulpit, as I said this morning, in our first service, when I stand behind this sacred desk, I feel a deep sense of responsibility. Because I know you have come here to hear what thus saith the Lord out of the word of God. And the task of preaching carries with it an obligation of the highest magnitude. The Apostle Paul said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But he added, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except to be sent? And God has sent us preachers both men and women, to carry this precious cargo. The 
incalculable love of God that is called the gospel of Christ. And I, I must say that, that I am one of the world's greatest optimists. And you'll find the reason why as I read to you from the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 1. And uh, this is my text. My text will be found in verse 4. Preaching to the people of God. And I'm going to pray that someone here will hear the message who is not saved and be saved and receive Christ tonight, today. As I indicated earlier, uh, 13 people came forward for baptism this morning and I'm looking for uh, someone to come forward in this service because God sent you here. You were here. You didn't come here to hear uh, some bland oratory. You didn't come here to be entertained by the choir. You came to be inspired. You came to be replenished. You came to be edified and built up that you may go back out and face a, a cruel and hostile world. Some of you who are without Christ, you came because you want to hear the word of God and be saved. And I hope that the Lord will use me this morning to that end. In verse 4 of chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians, I read, According as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I would like to read that one more time. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I said that I am one of the world's greatest optimists when it comes to faith in the power of God in the life of the believer. And I want you to bear with me as I proceed slowly. When I say slowly, that doesn't mean, this, doesn't mean that I'm going to take a long time. But I want someone to, to grasp the incalculable depth of the gospel. I want you to try to understand it. I want you to try to see it like I see it. I want you to try and feel it like I feel it. I want you to take these words from the word of God, not from philosophy, but directly from the Bible. And I want you to apply it, apply it in faith. I want you to believe God. But ladies and gentlemen, our problem is not the preaching. It's not the choir. It's not anything. It's, it's us. Sometimes we have things before us. We have, we have words right out of the Bible, right before us, that we have read many times. And somehow they have escaped us. We've read them. What, what I'm reading this morning is, is not anything you haven't read before. It's not like I have found a secret passage here that was never there. But because we have been led in other directions. You see, you can be led in another direction. Just by mindset. Folk have been led away from understanding the, 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 the power of God. They are afraid, they are so afraid they're going to be lost that they don't see how that God can save them and why. You know, a, a person led my mind astray one time, not it had nothing to do with, with, with the world, but just had to do with showing you how that you can get your mind in a certain track and it's hard to get it out. Uh, they asked me, said, uh, what does M-A-C-A-R-T-H-U-R -R spell? And I said, MacArthur. They said, what does M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D spell? And I said, McDonald. And they said, what does M-A-C-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S spell? And I said, Mac Williams. And they said, what does M-A-C-H-I-N-E spell? And I said, Mac Hines. 
and said, no, it spells machine. <laughs> they, 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 they got me down into those Macs. I know how to spell machine. I was a, a number one speller when I was going to school. I got honors for spelling when I was in the elementary school. Machine, that's the simple word. But they, they, but they locked my mind into Max. And you see, in spiritual things, you can get your mind locked into the Lord, if, if I don't do this, and if I, and I don't watch, and if I don't hold out, and if I don't, and if I don't, and they get you into lock into you. And you forget about the power of God. And what I want to do today is to get your mind unlocked out of the rut of you and get your mind on God. And I want you to see God in all of his power. I want you to get you away from this business about what God can't do unless you let him. God can't do this unless you let him. God can't do that unless you let him. God can't do the other unless you let him. I want to get you out of that. God does what he wants to do. When he wants to do it, he does not need your permission to do anything. Somebody said, God can't save you unless you want to be, unless you want to be saved. Well, I thought that, I think that's true in a way. God doesn't drag anybody screaming into heaven saying, oh, I don't want to go to heaven, I don't want to go to heaven, I don't want to go to heaven. But God has a way of dealing with you. She said, I told you I was going to go a little slow today. People keep talking about, oh, my free will, my free will, my free will, as if your free will was something apart from you. Your free will, is the word free will means that you have an opportunity to make a choice without being coerced or forced. But free will does not act beyond and outside of motive. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, all you free willers. If you're walking down a road and you come to a spot where the road breaks off and the road either goes straight or the road goes to the left or the road goes to the right, or you, obviously you've got the road behind you from which you came, you've got four choices. When you come there, you've got to see you're standing there. You're going to either go to the left, you're going to go to the right, you're either going to go forward, or you're going to go backward. Now, if you don't do something, you'll stand right there until you die. Something, something has an effect upon you that causes you to make the decision to go left or right or forward or turn around and go back. Something. It may be so subtle that you don't even recognize it. But you don't just do it. Because just to do something is like an imbecile. Imbeciles do without a reason. Imbeciles act without a motive. That's why they jump off buildings. Because they're not rational. But rational people act because something causes them to act. Yes, God does not drag anybody into heaven, kicking and screaming. But God works on you in such a way that you make the choice. But you didn't just make it willy-nilly. You made it for a reason. And God was in the background. Well, why did God do that for you? I'll tell you why. Because it says here in verse 4 that he chose you from the foundation of the world. Now, if God chose you from the foundation of the world, if he chose you, then he's got to do something. He's got to work some kind of way to get you to do what he wants you to do. Oh, yeah. I said, God is working here. God has to work 
to get you to do what he wants you to do. You think you're out there doing it all by yourself. I found the Lord. I chose God. I did this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand it all. Back there in the background, God is working. And, the, and I want you to have faith in that. Because the history of the people of God is filled with triumph based on faith. The song of faith reverberates throughout Scripture. In the dungeon, with their hands and feet in the stocks, men of God sang praises to the Lord at the midnight hour. In affliction and anguish, Paul writes to the Corinthians, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I brought another translation with me this morning because I wanted to read that passage to you out of this translation. It's a Bible, it's a Bible called the book. And I want to read it to you because there's something here. It's the same passage but it's only written in everyday language. And I want to read it to you. Here's what it says. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We are perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do. But we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. These bodies of ours are constantly facing death just as Jesus did. So it is clear to all that it is only the living Christ within that keeps us safe. Those are the words. Moses, as he stood there on the mountain, as the children of Israel were battling, uh, battling uh, down in the valley. From Joshua, with his ragtag army standing before the city of Jericho, to David before Goliath, to Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones, to St. John, banished uh, on the Isle of Patmos, we read of men and women who held strong conviction that God was with them. Well, why is it that the people of God will ultimately triumph. Why? The answer is found here in the Word of God. I say that you will triumph. I know a lot of men don't agree with me. I know people say, well, he believes in eternal security. And no, we don't believe in that. I know you don't, but I do. And I'm going to do everything in my power to preach this to the men and women whom God have placed under my care and direction. And to those of you who listen to me and see me on television, I believe that my God has chosen us from the foundation of the world and those whom God has chosen. He's going to keep. Now let's look at verse 4 again. Let's look at the word. According as he has chosen us in him. Somebody said, oh, that means the church. I'm in the church. You're the church. What do you mean that means the church? As if that's something out there somewhere. Everyone who's been baptized into the body of Christ is a part of the church. So you are part of the church. This is the church. Everywhere, everywhere there are people who believe in Jesus Christ and have been born again, it's the church. So when you say you're talking about the church, he's talking about those who are in it. I'm talking about a building somewhere. So don't, don't despair, you ministers who 
wherever you go, wherever you go, folk are criticizing the security of the believer. Wherever you go, folk, are, oh, I don't believe in it. Read the Bible. What does the Bible say? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Not that we should live in sin, but he chose that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. But I want you to stop and take a look at that word according. That you don't, you don't begin sentences with according. There's something that goes ahead of that. Well, let's look at what goes ahead of that. In verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him from the foundation of the world. That's why we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, because God has chosen us. Before there was a sun, before there was a mountain, before the morning stars sang together, before the sons of God shouted for joy, God chose us. Hallelujah. Chosen of God. That's why you're here today. You're not here today, ladies and gentlemen, because you are good. You're here because God got you here. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. I was a sinner. God brought me here. God kept me here. You're not here because God saw any good in you. You're not here because you're good. You're here because God is good. My God, ladies and gentlemen, if we would only understand it, if we only understood it, we'd get rid of some of this self-righteous hypocrisy that has been plaguing so many folks who are walking around thinking that they are all that great because they don't wear makeup, because you don't wear beads, because you don't wear jewelry. That don't make you any better than anybody else. What makes you better is the Holy Ghost down on the inside. Let's get rid of this Phariseeism. Let's look to God. What kind of people were you? I said you're here because God is good. Well, let's look at what Paul says in chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Just look at it. Don't just read it and act like it's not there. Look what you were before God found you. Oh, he's talking about the Lord looked down there and he saw something good. What good did he see? How could you save yourself? Look what he says in chapter 2. And you, hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and in sin. That's where you were. You were dead in sin when God found you. But now listen, I'm not through with this. I'm just, I'm just touching the surface. I'm just skimming right now. There's something better here. Hallelujah. Look at here. He says, in time past, now listen, this is past tense. In time past, he's talking to saved folk. He's talking to Holy Ghost folk. In, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. In time past, you walked according to the prince of the power of the air. In time past, you walked according to the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Am I reading the Bible? Look what he says in verse 3. Among whom also we, we, not them, we all had our conversation in time past. Now look how you live, look how you live in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now get this now. Now get this now. Even when you were doing that, when you were living. After the prison of power of the air, yes, when you were fulfilling the lust of your mind, when you were a child of wrath, even as others, while you were doing all of this. Now remember now, God had already chosen you. Remember that. Remember some of you who are out there not saved. God has already put his hand on you. God has already chosen you. 
And if God has chosen you, you're going to come. You're going to follow Christ because God is going to put this path in your way and you're going to make a decision and because God has chosen you, you're going to make the decision that God wants you to make. Some of you here were not college users. While you were, had the needle in your arm, while you were laying out the lines to sniff on that cocaine, you had already been chosen by God. How come you think you're not sniffing cocaine today? Why is it you're not putting the needle in your arm today? Why is it you're not out there running all around today? I'll tell you why. Because God has chosen you and he has changed you. Now, when God calls you, he's chosen you now, but when he calls you, he changes you. He don't live, you don't live in sin any longer because he chose us that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So I'm not talking about going to, he going to heaven sniffing cocaine. I'm not talking about going to heaven shooting heroin. I'm not talking about going to heaven living in adultery. I'm talking about going to heaven with your whole life changed. Am I getting across? I'm trying to get it across to you. I'm trying to get it across that this God that worketh in you to will and to do of his own good pleasure. I'm trying to lead you to the one uh, who leads us uh, to the crimson fountain. I'm trying to lead you to the one, Jesus Christ, uh, who is able uh, to cause your eyes to open. Uh, he called the blind to see. Uh, he called the lame to walk. Uh, he called the dumb to speak. Uh, he called the dead to rise up. He said to the man with the withered arm, stretch forth your hand, and he stretched it out. Uh, he said to the man on the pallet, get up and take up your bed and walk, and he did it. God spoke peace to my soul 40 years ago. I got up off of my pallet of sin. I stretched forth the hand of sin and been walking with the Lord. God called you and he called you and he called you and he called you and you and you and you and you. And, you. and now the Lord's calling somebody here now. You know what? I, I haven't even finished what I had written down here. But I believe the Lord is saying, stop now. Stop now. I think I said enough. If anybody want to be saved, I said enough. Somebody need the Holy Ghost. Somebody need Jesus. God brought you here. The Lord is talking to you now. Now the devil is whispering in your ear. Don't get saved. Don't get up. Don't get baptized. Don't, 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 don't. Don't listen to that. Because you, you have to roll. You have to cross road. Hear the verse of God. God bless you, my brother. Come right on down. God bless you. Come right, come right on down. Get right up. Come right on down. Whoever you are and wherever you are, I want you to start coming down now. This is your day. This is your hour. The Lord is calling you. The Lord's talking to you. I want you to come. Will you come? Come on. Why don't you follow those who've already gotten up? All those who've already come, they know the Lord is calling. Where are you, brother? Come on. God bless you, young lady. That's right. That's right. The Lord is talking to you. Praise the Lord. God bless you, dear. Yes. The Lord is calling. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, dear. Yes, the Lord is calling. The Lord is calling. God bless you, my brother. The Lord is calling. He's tenderly saying. Oh, Lord Jesus. You may be in overflow. If you're in overflow, you're not too far away. Get up over there. Come on. If you're in the balcony, get up. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody's already come before you. You're not the first one now. Somebody say, somebody else come out. Come. Now your time. Come on. That's right. God bless you. This is your time. See the hour. God bless you over there, my brother. That's right. Come right on down. That's right. Bring them right on down. This is your day. The Lord is calling you. You can feel it. You can feel it. The presence, presence is here. His presence.
I'm praying for because I wish my brethren could understand what I'm talking about. We're not talking about living in sin. We're not talking about sinners going to heaven. I'm just trying to get people to see that when you put your trust in God and not in yourself, you will be victorious. Step out on his word and his promises. Moses had to go on promises of God. One of the reasons why the children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years was when God brought them to Canaan. Instead of them going in and possessing the land, they sent out 12 spies. And the majority of the spies came back and said, we can't take the land. And listen to this. The people began to complain and say to God, you have brought us out here to die. You brought our children out here to die. And they wanted to appoint them a captain to take them back into Egypt. And the Lord said, because you have said this, because you have said your children are going to die in the wilderness, that I'm going to bring your children in. But you, Carcasses will fall in this wilderness. 
but the children that you said would die, I'm going to bring them into the promised land. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a God that's a great God. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And I'm thrilled with it. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord here today. I feel you. I, I know you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, say praise the Lord. Time come to pray. Shall we stand? We're going to ask Minister Smith to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Our dear kindly Father, we come before you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord Jesus. You see us as we're standing by our seats, Lord. You know every need right now, Lord. We pray that you would stretch forth your hand of deliverance, Lord Jesus. You will increase our faith to stand firm on your word, Lord Jesus, that you are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. We pray right now that you would touch someone's heart, Lord Jesus, who is mixed with unbelief, Lord, that you would turn that unbelief into belief, Lord Jesus, for we know that you are able right now, Lord Jesus. We pray that you bind every hindering spirit, that you will use us to your greater glory. Lord Jesus, we pray right now that you will bless us to praise you, to magnify your name, to lift our hands up in worship to thee, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love, for your grace that you shared upon us, for filling us with the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. We shout hallelujah. We believe you for these things. Oh, Lord, bless us, we pray. Oh, hallelujah. Use us to your greater glory, we pray. We ask these blessings in your name and for your sake. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We love you. Amen.